everyone, and welcome to another in the series of Beings Across the World. Today, I have Sala and Sadi. Hello. How are you? Hi. Hi. I, first of all, I should actually say Bula, right? Yeah. <laughs> Is that <laughs> how you say it? Yeah. Bula. All right. Bula Vinaka. All yeah. right. We're, they are coming to us from Suva, or Suva City, Suva, and Fiji. So... What I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you. And when I do this, I go off of our screen. And so I'm not going to see it. So just let me know if you do. And um, we'll go from there. Hold on a second. And can you see that? Yes. Perfect. Yes. Okay. And we're going to just zoom in on your part of the world. There you are in the middle of the ocean. This yeah. is exciting. <laughs> this is really exciting. Okay, Aww. and we will get real close up here. And I'm going to give some facts about the so area. Close, <laughs> do you want? <laughs> we can do. We can do the the satellite. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm going to give some um, interesting facts about your area. So the country of Fiji is an archipelago in the South Pacific, made up of more than 300 islands. Um, but I guess 223 are uninhabited. Uh, let's see. Most of the population lives on two major islands of BT Levu and Vanua Levu. Is that, am I saying that correctly? Ish, but yeah. it works. <laughs> okay. I'm so, sorry. You can always. Viti Levu me. and, yeah, no, that's fine. Viti Levu and Vanua Levu. I thought that's what I said. Or did I say that? <laughs> I'm sorry. I apologize. That's I apologize. fine. That's fine. That's a different language to yours. So BT, that's no, totally it's BT Levu. If I could just read my own writing is what it is. BT Levu and Vanua <laughs> Levu is actually what I do have written down. Okay. Suva is the capital city and that's where you're at. Um, yeah. And it's on BT Levu, right? Okay, so known for its pristine waters, beautiful beaches, and coral reefs, it has over 1,500 species of marine life. 40% uh, of the population is of Indian descent, and was colon it was colonized by the British between 1874 and 1970. Uh, let's see, the largest Hindu temple, uh, going back to the Indian population, the largest Hindu temple is in the... I'm sorry, they have the largest Hindu temple in the Southern Hemisphere, and that's in Nadi, which is near you, right? Yep. Okay. So the traditional drink there is kava, and it's made from the root of the, this is, I'm not going to pronounce right, Yagona, Yagona? Yagona, yeah. Yeah, close. Yagona, okay. Yeah. It's made from the root of the Yagona bush. Uh, you guys have 28 airports. But you only have four with paved runways. <laughs> so if anybody's flying in, they might want to know that. <laughs> now, yeah, yeah. boiled bat is considered a delicacy by the locals. Is that true? Uh, in the interiors, in the villages and stuff, yeah. But nobody is going to, like, open up and uh, openly talk about eating bats or dogs. But, you know, it is a part of the diet. Dogs. Okay, we'll have to get into yeah. that later. And uh, well, getting it further into this, cannibalism was once common, and it ended in 1871 when King Ratu Kekobau yeah. uh, encouraged people to stop. So he asked them to please stop in 1871. <laughs> um, yeah. Now, the Fijians now regard those years as Naguana Ni Tavoro, which means the time of the devil. Is that correct? Mm. Okay, so, um, oh, this is an interesting fact. Unless you are the chief, wearing a hat and sunglasses in a Fijian village is a no-no. And some, Fij some Fijians raise their right eyebrow to say no. Now I tried that, and I can't raise my right eyebrow on its own. I can only I can kind of raise the left, so I yeah. wouldn't be able to say no. <laughs> <laughs> I won't be able to say no when I'm in. Fiji. 
Um, English, Fijian, and Hindi are the official languages, and the Fijian dollar is the official currency. There are no venomous snakes in Fiji, which is nice to know. Firewall um, originated. Is that not true? I read yeah, uh, yeah, that's not true actually, because uh, really? one of the yeah the one of the marine snakes is actually the top in, in the top ten most venomous in the world. But they don't like, oh. you know, they would only attack you if you're like really going for them, or if if you're swimming next to them, they won't attack you, or they they just you know, doing their own thing. So they're not like Australia's venomous <laughs> critters, well, you know? Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Well, I guess I'm yeah. going to have to write to those people that gave me the wrong the, the wrong information. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that's a <laughs> website for um, a volunteer site where they do marine stuff. Ah. Mm. So I'm going to have to, yeah, I'll have to let them know that. Um, fire walking originated in the islands around 500 years ago. And... Um, Village groups own over 80% of the Fiji's islands, or I'm sorry, land. And mm. here's a, a weird fact. Mel Gibson bought the island of Mago for $15 million in 2005. So he owns one of the islands, I guess. Yeah. And, and you have a population of around 935,974 people as of July 2020. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And I'll get back to us. Okay, so let's get started with our questions. I want to get to know you guys a little bit. So why don't you guys tell us about yourselves? And like, for example, what do you do? And what kind of activism are you involved in? Whoever wants to go first. How do you want to start? Okay, I'll start. Um, uh, so um, I work as a teaching assistant, which is basically a tutor at university for an undergraduate uh, level course, a 200 level undergraduate course uh, in Pacific studies. So it's basically uh, an int introduction to Pacific worlds and it's a multidisciplinary course for undergraduate students. And it's about history, history of the Pacific, art, culture, you know, socioeconomics, and just, it's just, a lot of things generic about the Pacific, uh, fostering a Pacific consciousness in students, you know. And uh, sorry, what was the other part of the question about? Uh, what kind of activism are you involved in? Uh, so, uh, so lately it's just been uh, online, and uh, I've been I've been vegan and an activist since the first of May. It just happened to be the first of May that I'd. You know, it, it was a change overnight, and uh, thanks to Sala, uh, I went vegan. Uh, so I, I had been hearing, you know, like this, the word vegan kept coming up the past three or four years. And 2019, a friend, a French friend of mine had come to visit, and he was, he was suddenly vegan, but he was plant-based. He's plant-based, he's not vegan, uh, I think. I don't know. I don't know now. But um, he was telling me about it, and I was just like, I had this whole fake idea in my head that I'd constructed because I love, I've loved animals since I was a kid. But this, you know, this thing about um, someone in India had, had told me that um, all animals born in animal agriculture um, do have planned to suffer that much in the spiritual realm so that they can gain karmic points. And I believed that. So that they can evolve their karmic soul, and I believed that, you know, and I hate myself for that. And um, and I was yeah. So like I kept hearing this vegan term, and then I it was always this vegan. It's so it's about food and whatever. And then so he was trying to tell me about you know, and then I did all this research about oh you know chimps sometimes eat birds' eggs, and they might even eat little birds, and that was my justification. You know, and then yeah, animals I must, do it in the wild. Yeah, yeah, and then and then like animal lover from birth, and I have a lot of stories from when I was growing up. I'm sure Sala does too about how that disconnect, that divide. I'll just tell you a quick short story. Uh, I asked after mom and I went vegan overnight because I went vegan because of Sala, and then mom too that same night, and then so I lived with my mom. 
And uh, yeah, so I asked her, mom, because um, I remember when I was four, we used to, have, and we lived on the other main island, Vanua Levu. And I asked mom, uh, mom, why did we have chickens? Were we killing them and eating them? And she was like, no, we, we brought them for you to play with. And I was like, what? <laughs> and I was like, so Believe we were that. playing. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Did she really then, have chickens for you to play with? What happened? Yes, yes, yes. I don't know if they were sold. I, when we came to Suva, they were sold or given away. I know uh, one had died because I remember that bird. Even though I was four years old, I remember that bird. Uh, I don't know how she died, but she died in front of me. She fell, she collapsed, and she died. And then so I was asking Mama, I was like, uh, why did we have them? And she was like, for you to play with. And then... And then I was like, so we were playing with these chicken and then we were eating the frozen chicken from the store for dinner. And she's like, yeah, I was like, that is effed up, mom. And she's like, that <laughs> is really effed up. <laughs> and wow. yeah, so that's one of the stories. And I have many others. And, you know, like how this, that how that cognitive dissonance works is just crazy. And then so after all of this, so la long story short, uh, I was doing my final unit for my postgraduate um, diploma in English literature, which is how I met Sala. And this is before COVID hit Fiji. And so I met her and then, you know, like in class and I was like so excited to see her because she was, you know, she Sala will explain to you her background, but like, you know, this beautiful girl with these dreadlocks and this high fashion girl. And I was like, oh, she's cool. And then we were talking outside with uh, three of our other classmates one day before class. And some she said vegan. And then and I looked at her and I was like, are you a vegan? And she was like, yeah. And for me to, you know, conceive of uh, an indigenous Fijian uh, girl, and Ito, the term is in itoke, so to see an Itoke girl saying that she's vegan, like gave was a shock to me and my ears just pricked up and I was like, oh, okay. And then when we became friends on Facebook and then I started seeing her posts. I never commented on any of her posts, but like some of her things she was arguing with people, I would like some you know, comments here and there. I'd pick and choose which comments to like and then and then it was just, it just makes sense. I really don't get how people can sit there and try and justify this atrocious thing that's a part of, you know, uh, everyday normalized violence. I don't know how people can do that. And it just made sense. And I told mom, there was dead uh, chicken body cooked in a curry uh, that night. And I came and I had told her that, you know, I think I'm slowly going to start. And then she's like, and then she, we were getting dinner out and she, warmed up that the, those bits of those that cor those corpses and i was like i can't eat that you know yeah. how how do you slowly you know how do you murder less how do you slowly become vegan i don't get it you know a lot of people have done the slowly thing uh, because maybe they didn't go for, they didn't um, realize the veganism part maybe they're doing it uh, environmental or diet, you know, that's where the yeah, slow right comes. Yeah. yeah, so so that was it. The first of May, and that was yeah. it. And I was like, that, I didn't you know what, done, to what What kind of activism you've done? You said online, but didn't you do, uh, don't you do AV? Yeah, we've done two AV um, um, uh, outreaches and Cubes of Truth. And our organizer, our coordinate, AV coordinator is uh, uh, based in Nandi, uh, the other town, so on the other side of Viti Levu. So hopefully you can interview her as well. Uh, maybe, you know, you can become friends on Facebook as well. She is an intense lady, uh, intense girl. <laughs> and yeah, so she uh, she has been vegan longer than us. She's been vegan four years. Um, okay. And uh, yeah, so she organizes the AV ones and we've done two, one in the West. It was so interesting. Oh my God. And then one in Suva, Suva city. We did it right in the city. Um, yeah. 
So just two at the moment, but, and you know, the COVID and uh, we can't, we've been wanting to do more and we, you know, when Are you guys once in we lockdown? wanted, uh, yeah, Are you? pretty much. But like, um, you can move about for necessities, just no, un but like everything is open in Suva, uh, like businesses have started opening, they're doing mass vaccinations and they just want to get this vaccination thing done so they can, I think, open borders and, uh, because tourism was our number one uh, tourism yeah. was our number one industry you know and yeah. yeah so the economy is really, really has suffered a huge blow so sala uh, what what do you do and what kind of act i mean besides av what kind of activism are you involved in um so at the moment i'm working full-time on my thesis my master's thesis I'm on scholarship from USP, so it also involves the tutoring, a TA ship like study does. So I've been tutoring at USP for the past oof, four years, <laughs> five years on and off, and I tutor literature. Mm, yeah, Are activities. you both still in, in college right now? Beg your pardon? I'm sorry. Are you both still in college right now? In school. Uh, Sala Sala is finishing her master's thesis. Yeah. Uh, I am, I will. I'm planning on doing it. I don't know when, but I I have to do it as well. I want to do it as well. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I also did um, mostly online activism when I started. I've done the two uh, street activism with Adi, um in Nandi and in Kuta. But yes, I think. The bulk of my activism used to be online, used to be on Facebook, um, but I I've been vegan January 2020. So has it been a year? What 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 time is it? More than <laughs> okay. over a year and a half. Then. Yeah, a year, a year and, and a half. half. Okay. And yeah, I was I was the quintessential very angry vegan when I started off. And I also um, do a lot of research work. So it was a perfect combination. Like I would just be writing my thesis on Facebook for veganism. I was doing the whole vegan uh, manifesto. But yeah, I, it's, um, it, it's very draining, you know, online. Well, activism. I've I, been, I mean, you know, right now with the with the lockdowns and all that stuff, online activism is extremely important. It's you know, it's never been more important than it is now. And that's, that's partially why I'm doing these interviews as well. Um, and it's amazing how many people I have actually met that have gone vegan during lockdown. And so you know, you really can't uh, can't knock the social activism right now. Because I'm sure that's yeah. how it's touched a lot of people. So, yeah. yeah, I think social media is the um, the main place where activism happens. There, yeah? like a lot of the converts come from social media, and yeah. it it it's so it's so important that social media activism happens. But at the same time, it is so. I think maybe because we're doing it on our personal pages. And so we had family, friends, and random strangers just commenting stuff that, like, our whole research is here, and then they comment something, and I'm like, oh, yes. But mostly now, I, I um, do face-to-face -face activism in the very rare moments that I see other human beings outside sure. of my bubble. I think and both are important. Both, both oh, and uh, sorry, face -face sorry and to cut you off so, uh, sorry just something popped in my head of uh, one thing that sala used to do uh and because of covid that you know it's not being done is how you used to um uh, do braids and then the it, it like she did braids really cheap and so the trick was while she's doing the braids you have to watch a documentary <laughs> you have to that's watch awesome seven. You have got seven documentaries, <laughs> but in fairness, it takes me like 10 hours to do one person's hair. 
So I was going to say that takes a long time to do somebody's hair, doesn't it? And wow, yeah. that's great. That's awesome. That's a great idea for activism. I forgot yeah. about that. Yeah. Did you make a lot of impact through that? What did, what did people do when they had to see? I mean, it, a lot of it's was, gruesome. The response was, the response was amazing. Um, one of the girls whose hair I braided became vegan. She's vegan now. And another one um, became plant-based, predominantly plant-based. And I think it's because with, with the documentaries, I... Although I, I, I hate the conflation between animals and the environment and health, unfortunately, human beings are human supremacists. You know, we have to hit them everywhere. So the documentaries would first cover health because we're selfish. We want us first. And then the environment because this is our home. If it goes down, we go down. And then the end becomes dominion <laughs> to just... There you go. Yeah. everything in you know? and i think by the time they were watching dominion their minds were completely changed you know the the fact the fact that society doesn't know about animal agriculture itself is mind-blowing and yeah. people need to take a while to process you know it's a whole illusion that just that messes with your mind yeah yeah well, listen, you know, you talked about when you began, which wasn't that long ago, you were the angry vegan, but I've been vegan for 15 years. I'm still the angry vegan. So, <laughs> don't worry. We, we have a long way to go. Angrier. <laughs> I think I get angrier with every year that it takes uh, longer for the world to become vegan and that people are listening to me, you know? <laughs> yeah. But I want to ask yeah. you guys, are you both original? Where are you originally from? Are you both from... Um, Fiji or even Suva City. Yeah, you're both yeah. originally yep. from there. So why don't you yeah. guys tell us what, what the culture and the food like or and the food are like where you're at? Fiji. Um I the thing with Fiji is we have a very um, respectful culture. The the it's okay culture is so very respectful. And I think that that's why with the activism, the street activism, you saw that it was very respectful yeah. and that's that's also something like we have been watching you know joey Armstrong and earthling ed and all of this activism, all of this activism. And james Aspen. and we were kind of worried about what the public reaction would be but that's the thing with fiji um face to face everyone is so very nice it's only when they become keyboard warriors that that's the yeah. worst <laughs> i think that's all yeah that's the world over i, I there's a lot of people like that <laughs> Like, uh, you know, like the Japanese culture, you know, aren't they like really polite in society? Well, that's from what I understand. I've never been there. But I don't know if you've ever seen on YouTube how many Japanese people make comments on some of the vegan content. And, it, well, it's also gamers and kids, you know, that just makes them really – brutal comments about veganism so but anyway uh but what what's the culture or besides the, the you know the being so polite the culture and the food like because food is a big part of culture and i think people um you know i think they would associate the, the islands with with a whole culture of of, of food and 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 like you know the rap, you know wrapping bar uh, yeah. pig barbecues and wrapping food and banana leaves and you know, stuff like that. So uh, tell us what it's like there for you. What's it like now? What's the culture like now? What's the culture like now? Um. Okay. So traditionally, uh, so Itoke, which is uh, indigenous Fijian culture, uh, you know. Uh, bovines were introduced when colonialism happened so if you look at traditional diet um it would be uh, you know a lot of root crops a lot of uh, these uh, you know uh, taro leaves and uh, sea moss seaweeds and um, of course now that we've gone to the sea and we're surrounded by the ocean coastal communities 
sea animals yeah. uh, traditionally you know and um, and then there's some islands that you know that they, they survive on so it's a bit tricky for us when we when we start talking about sea animal but we're talking to people who live you know in the city and go to the supermarket and they like use that crutch of the tradition and my culture and my tradition to you know like justify that and then yeah so that part and um, but pigs i know yeah sala is that true the pigs were were part of traditions because i know that the pigs uh, tusks are used as um as uh, an ornament i actually have one here if you'd like to see it uh, it was bought uh, i still haven't buried all my things that i was i've got all my things that i used to wear and stuff pre going vegan and it's all in a box and i am going to bury them all my my italian leather shoes yeah. like you know it's all i've put it everything that you know i am finding and so this one is here uh, hang on it took me a while to get rid of uh, some of my stuff over the years. Yeah. So if you'd like yeah, to continue, I, Sala, yes. while I get I this. think uh, I'm pretty sure pigs were um, indigenous to Fiji. There might have been some introduced as well, but either way, pig is a huge part of our culture in Fiji. Of, um, like wild boar. So that's yeah. the and, uh, wild boar traditional yeah. necklace and this poor you know pig is now even now the people are uh, still practicing it but i don't know about so it's become like uh, uh culture is becoming commodified for tourism you know yeah. so this is still I happening read that. yeah yeah I, so this I read is still that a happening. lot of the like for example a lot of the boys uh they carve out weapons and stuff like that and um even wood forks as like a, a kind of a novelty to the yeah. like an ode to the cannibal culture yeah. or if a past yeah um, and they sell those to tourists i also read yeah. that uh a gift that's given to some people is a whale's tooth is that oh true? Yeah. yeah it's a big part of our culture it, it's the tambour. They usually give it, it. How do I say? It's like a sign of utmost your respect. Yeah, your family wealth, and a lot of the ceremonies in Fiji are are a show, kind of a show and tell. Yeah? Who bought the biggest? Who bought the most mat? The most tambour, the biggest one. So the tambour is used a lot for weddings, thrills. Um, going to get asked for the girl's hand in marriage. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now, when these, I know gift giving is a big part of culture, right? Or giving and receiving gifts, from what I understand, what I was reading. So what if now that you're vegan, you were offered a gift of an animal, like, like the tusk you have now, Sadi. What if you were offered that now? Would it be rude for you to, to uh, turn it down? Um. I it will, will turn rude. it down. It will be rude, but personally, I will turn it down. Yeah. But there are, and we know we have a mutual friend who, uh, he w has got, been through a lot. He's very young, and he's studying veterinary science, and he has seen some very, uh, very very bad things happen to animals. And he's he. I don't know if but he broke his vow of never harming an animal after you know staying in the village for a while to do his practical and stuff and so i don't know about his status as is he still an activist is he even still vegan and i we were really very uh all of us very upset that uh after four years of him you know fighting for the animals and now he uh be, you know, like has started abusing them again. And it was all this pressure that he was under. And uh, mentally, he was going through this. Uh, we would try to get him help, but uh, he, he said he's OK now. But I haven't asked him. But Angie, our AV coordinator here, actually told us in our group chat that 
he's going to be coming back into the group because he left the group. He said, and he was going through this really tough time. So he had told, we went up to see him uh, three, four hours drive away, Salah, another friend of ours, and I took, took him a whole bunch of vegan and plant-based stuff. And uh, yeah, and he was just like, it's effed up what he's doing there and what he's asked to do and he just can't say no. Uh, so yeah, so like, so for some people, like he he caved in and you know, these traditional ceremonies that he became part of and he himself had to kill animals, not euthanize, but kill. Um, yeah, so I don't know what his status is at the moment, but like for him, he caved into that, you know, like disrespect to the culture and this and that. But for me, like, um, well, let's go back I, a lot to of, that a little yeah. bit. You know, let's go back to that a little bit. You said that you, you know, you get a lot of people that use the excuse tradition, and he's, you know, he's he's uh, caving into that as well. But really, have you ever used the argument with somebody about, well, just a hundred, literally this year, a hundred fifty years ago, just that recently? It was it was cannibalism was acceptable. Yeah. So do they still think that's okay? No. You look at it back. You look back on it as the time of the devil. Hopefully, one of these yeah. days, the whole world will look back at eating other animals as the time yeah. of the devil. You know. Yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, I was I was actually looking into it when when I saw 1871. That's literally 150 years ago. Yeah. Slavery was abolished in the states before cannibalism was abolished in Fiji. So that's yeah. pretty recently, you know? Yeah. Uh, and if they're going to use their to this tradition argument, yeah. if you ask them, well, what would you say, you know, what do you think you would think, where would you end on cannibalism now? <laughs> you know? Yeah. And we if have done that. Okay. We've, we yeah. We have like... We uh, have Conversation under the sun concerning veganism and every argument thrown at us, like mind blowing. Yeah. But yes, like, yeah. well, that was traditional, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, uh, like um, you know, like they'd say, as, as soon as they bring it up, uh, immediately we we use the cannibalism, and immediately we can use, you know, if if it's a female uh, person, uh, immediately we'd use, you know, but. Uh, before col uh, colonization, uh, uh, Fijian women uh, were going topless. You know, yeah. the the yeah. only a skirt was worn and the breasts were open. It's like you're not doing that now. That is traditional. So why are you not doing that now? Yeah, they, they've kind of you adapted know? to the modern world. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's some islands so, where people still. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, in the Solomons, in the Solomons, they there's tribes, certain tribes who still, you know, uh, go yeah, topless. Yeah. The women, and it's just part of the tradition and the culture and you know but uh, i don't know if, sala i don't know if you have read anything about it or not but i've been hearing from people that um uh, people base a lot of this excuse for uh, eating animals on uh, fijian tradition but i've been hearing from a few people that traditional foods were mostly plant-based plant yeah yeah okay yeah, so i, I need to get that research as well to find out more about it if we, we when we get time we can do that yeah yeah I a lot of people that i talk to i i found a lot of people that i talk to when they look into it, it a lot of their uh the beginnings of their cultures were plant-based uh, primarily plant-based especially in the tropical region you know hmm. Hmm. Especially and it, it, it sorry and and it is a class thing as well because when we, like mom and I constantly talk, it's been a year. We constantly talk about uh, plant based and we constantly talk about animal abuse. And she was sharing with me when they were younger. She was saying we they didn't kill or and eat uh, chickens every day or you know most it would be like once in a month. You know, so yeah. as you know, like it was, it's a class thing as well. Like more, oh, it, it's a significant, uh, you know, it signifies more wealth and, uh, you know, like, um, and it's not like they, we usually hear this, you know, it's a, priv veganism is privileged yeah, and, you know, exactly. all of that, like, you know, expensive. And it's like, no, this is not true. The, pri you know, the privilege is the ones who are, uh, you know, wasting money on buying these dead bodies of animals. 
you know when in the past your parents even like my mom like it was once a month that they killed a chicken on the farm you know no, and most of it was always plant based so it's really interesting when we start talking have the start having these conversations about what we used to eat and how the how big foods is now riding the narrative on what we should be eating and what is normal to eat and it's just been what like you said it's not been long that all these changes all these sudden changes this globalized way of eating you know like an americanization has had a huge role to play in you know burgers and yeah uh, hot dogs you yeah, know yeah and had, fast like, food restaurants trading like every corner of the planet i mean you'd be really surprised at some of the places that you can find a kfc or an or a mcdonald's I mean, just, we have, and we have just remote we places have. in the world, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I know like 20 years ago, I went to Egypt and I thought it was really crazy that I saw a KFC in, in Cairo. I, wow. I don't know why it's a ago. huge city, but, but, but to me, I just felt like that was so out of place. I don't know because, you know, I live nor just north of Kentucky. Kentucky fried chicken is a whole American thing, not just Kentucky. Yeah. You know what I mean? It just, it just seemed yeah. really odd just for me as yeah. an American to go all the way over to Cairo, Egypt and see a KFC. Yeah. <laughs> it was weird to me. But yeah, it's, it's, uh, yeah, I've talked to, like, uh, I talked to Dash. I don't know if you know Dash, who's the organizer for AV in, um, in Uganda. And he, he actually grew up with, uh, his family he had a chicken business. And he left the business and became vegan. And uh, he was out. To, he said he was out to eat one time, and a friend came in and saw that he wasn't. He had no meat, and, and offered. It. He said, "I'll buy you some chicken," thinking he it was because he was poor. So yeah, it's a status thing. Eating meat is a status thing. It's to show that you've made it. Um, yeah. And, and so it's so ironic that people try to turn around on us and say that it's a privilege to be vegan, when actually. No, it's a sign of, of privilege to eat meat is what it is. It's yeah. actually the opposite. It's so amazing how people twist this stuff, you know? Yeah. But and there you go. The world is upside down, isn't it? Yeah. So you kind of told us how long you guys have been vegan. Uh, Sadi, you told us what made you want to, but Sala, what made you want to? To, to very distinct things happened in my life in 2019. Um, one, my boss who um, had cancer, he was from New Zealand and he had no family and, or friends here in Fiji. So I looked after him, me and my partner at that time, we um, looked after him for I think two months as he deteriorated and passed away in my arms. Um, but it was it was crazy we, we couldn't talk in the house so the little sound would just have everyone off we weren't sleeping because he had to take medication so we're going in and out of the hospital but what was so hurtful for me to witness was the pain that he was in um the cancer had spread to his bones so his bones were just breaking and it was just so so emotionally um heavy to just witness he was in constant pain, constant pain. And I didn't think much of it. I, I when, when he passed away, it was done. I just thought of him as the human. I thought of his pain. I didn't associate it to anything. And then um, my sister and her husband and the two kids who my nephew and niece are the love of my life. They went to Australia during the Australian bushfires of 2019. And I was freaking out. I was telling her, come back to Fiji, something's gonna happen to the kids. And I started doing research on climate change. And this was the first time for me to actually do um, not just mainstream research, like actually go in and find the credibility of the sources. And then I found out about animal agriculture and it's, um, and its impact, like the, the crazy amount of, it's the foundation of climate change and global warming and all the nine planetary boundaries just disintegrating in front of our eyes is animal agriculture. 
And so I watched the documentaries, the conspiracy, what the hell, game changes, plan for your nation, all the health and um, environment ones. And then I became plan based. I'm, I'm sorry to see it. I did it. <laughs> I became plan based. And uh, it was only when I saw Dominion, because it was leading to that, you know, the cruelty aspects of all, in all these videos. When I saw Dominion, it just, I, I'm very, um, very attuned to people's emotions and to being sentient emotions and to see how the animals were suffering. It, it also reminded me of how can suffer there. Eh? And I think humans don't understand that animals, non-human and human animals suffer in the same way. And to actually witness the animal suffering, to see it, and yeah, I, I immediately became vegan at that point. And I was the type of carnist that used to say, I'm allergic to vegetables. Sadie and I were talking about this yesterday. We were talking I about it the other day. <laughs> yeah, I'm allergic to vegetables. I would, I would buy just a fish head and eat the eyes and then crack the skull to get the brain inside. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah. I, I started, I, I admit that I started plant-based until I understood the ethics. That's, that's what you are until yes. you understand the ethics. You are plant based because yeah. uh, you simply can't be vegan unless you're doing it for the animals. So, which yes. is fine yes. if that's the way you're starting until you find out what's going on. But the more yes. I found out, the more I eliminated it. And finally, when I finally got it, I was like, this is about justice. Um, that's yeah. when I became vegan. Yeah. So, and, and, you know, I've eaten all that. I, I, I used to cook uh, all kinds of stuff. Uh, bacon wrapped steaks and you know uh i cooked fish with eyes in them and you know remember my boyfriend at the time freaking out that the eyes were in the fish and i'm like what are you so freaked <laughs> out about you know uh yeah, yeah i need a whole fight fried fish uh you know fries and everything but uh and i remember going to new orleans and being taught how to scoop out the brains out of a crawfish to eat it and, you know stuff like that and i was so disconnected so i mean look back on yeah. it now it's crazy so <laughs> yeah it's crazy when you figure out when you try and reflect on who you were when you were a carnist yeah. and you know you were, you it, were just you're blind you're totally blind you were numb to it yeah uh, but once you learn the truth there's not an excuse that's the most frustrating it's the people that know the truth and still you know continue but yeah, yeah. they um so, sorry Calvin, the animal activist, he is a vegan activist in India. He has said this, he has this video on Ahimsa being the greatest virtue. And he said, if you're doing something wrong and you don't know that it's wrong, that's not a sin. The sin is when you find out that it's wrong and you willfully continue to do it, then you will exactly. suffer the consequences of it. Yeah? And yeah, it blows my mind when people are able to see the truth of it and then willfully ignore it that that's crazy yeah i mean i'm not mad at people that come up to the cube when i'm doing a cube that honestly did not know you know i'm not mad at them i get i'm there to give them information i'm mad at the yeah. people that know and don't fuck. you know they're just like so what you know i like the way it tastes i don't care really yeah. <laughs> you know that's that's what i get mad at i mean you know i was just i just obviously i guess didn't know it never occurred to me i never made the connection when i when i finally made that connection i was just like wow then i was mad because i felt like i had been lied to all my life and it just made me yeah you know want to go out and and uh speak yeah. up for the animals more so um yeah so our are any of your family or friends vegan? Sadi, you, you told us your mom i you said your mom went vegan. Any of your other family or friends, either one of you? Mm, no. <laughs> um, I, I became like, that was my life goal. So I think I have maybe 10 to 15 people who are, no, 8 to 10. Some of them dropped off. 8 to 10 people who are vegans now. 
Um, your brother, partner, your sister. So part of your family? My brother is vegan. The rest of my family is predominantly plant-based. Um, my friends, maybe the four closest people to me are vegans as well. And my partner is also vegan. So, yeah, I'm just trying to create this vegan army around. <laughs> So the ones that are in your family and friends that aren't vegan, what do they think about your, what do they think about your veganism now, especially now that you've become activist? What do they think about it now? You know how they say uh, at first they will revolt and then they will be understanding and then they will agree. So I'm kind of experiencing that in the past year of being an activist. Like first my friends were like, oh my God, Sadie, I, can't wait for you to drop all of this and i was like thinking <laughs> why are they not understanding what is yeah. happening you know like you know you're so when you first go vegan you're so excited you know like oh my god look at what the hell we were doing and they're like yeah no. that your eyes were opened uh, and you just think well, yeah and you just, just want them i just need to find out they'll be like me <laughs> yeah no it and doesn't happen so, that way <laughs> And it's been really hard, like, uh, um, you know, like when you, when you like, when you feel, okay, it's in just one comment uh, on online, you feel like you've said everything that should make someone say, you know, oh my God, you're so right. And then they, you know, all these, that's how we, you know, learned about uh, They the, come up with some kind of excuse. The teeth, they? the canines, yeah. and all of this. And then finding out that it's the same cr all over the globe, it's just crazy yeah. that, you know, it's the same sort of arguments that they have not researched. So, but how yeah. are they saying these same stupid things? Yeah. Like, you know, <laughs> it's amazing that it amazes you in, on one hand and then it frustrates you on the other hand. But then from the past year, few of a few people who one person just completely and outrightly went and said um oh my god and he went vegan um and that was within a few months of so sala and i and everyone we were like now starting to have like tallying up who's turning <laughs> how many people vegan <laughs> so I you know sala is winning at the moment <laughs> I'm told Sadi, whoever he converts to veganism, really is me, you know. I'll take 50% of it. <laughs> That's true, Sadi, because she turned yeah, vegan. Yeah. So yeah. And I'm like, I no. I have to cut it for everybody that you turn me. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then the rest, uh, some one of like all of them, like not completely vegan, but I mean, what am I saying? They're not vegan, but they are aware and they've, made changes in their life like one friend is just completely cut off from dairy but like obviously they're still dissonant a little bit dissonant and a little bit still uh of hum human supremacists and yeah. so you know like when we so when we start talking about uh but what about the fish you know like and they're like what about the fish you know like the first thing they always ask is oh what about fish <laughs> so sala has said this uh, line that i always use that's amazing and i'm like um what are they potatoes you know yeah because <laughs> we've dehumanized them you know desentientized them they live in a so totally much totally different environment that we don't identify with we don't understand yeah. and that they don't make noises that we or, or facial expressions yeah. that we understand mm. even from land mm. creatures Mm. And uh, so they're completely alien to us. So yeah, and this is me. I know like, this mindset because it's one of the last things that I let go. So mm. I think that I kind of did some justifying for a while right before I finally mm. went along. Mm. Because thing. yeah, yeah, it is true that we cannot connect to them in some way. But then when you give someone like um, okay, my old boss, you know, she's she's got a PhD in you know in whatever and something indigenous something. And like she's a really intelligent person and an artist and everything, you know. And I th like I just want people who I love to realize this crazy, um, you know, propaganda that we've been part of and this conditioning and escape that. 
And then yeah. she has made excuses, you know? And it's I'm so just... frustrating to see people that you respect that are very intelligent, very sharp people. And emotional. And everything else but this yeah. area. And, then yeah. they and compassionate right people. This, yeah. yeah. They fall right so it, into the same uh, stereotype as everybody else when it comes to yeah, this Yeah, it's subject. really, really frustrating, frustrating and like disappointing, disappointing discouraging. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, like, so so apart, apart from that one person that uh, went vegan, like after just watching a video that Salah's then partner had uh, created and I had shared it and he just watched, he told me he just watched that video and he was like, he went vegan. So and then he, uh, yeah. Her partner created a video. Is it just like a YouTube, TikTok? What is it? I guess I should no. Ask. He used he used clips. He used clips from Dominion and put uh, a sound bed on it. Okay. Uh, I don't know where. I hope that video is somewhere. It might come up on my uh, Facebook. Is it stories. like a YouTube video, Sala, that your partner made? Chris, yeah. Chris made that video. Remember? Yeah. Well, you know what? I Anything that we talk about on here that you guys want to give me links to, any groups, any restaurants, that video, I will leave them below this video for everybody to check out, including your social media pages. Anything you want me to include will be below for everyone to check out. Awesome. Okay. And so yeah, so like we'll apart, uh, sorry, sorry, uh, Stacy. So apart ap apart from that person, I have well, one, two, three, four, about five people who've like made drastic changes. Like one of my friends from Australia who, um, you know, like really attacked me in one of our back and forth online, and you know, told me to go and sit on something. Um, <laughs> uh, and then he about a month ago he messaged me. And he, he's going, he's gone plant based basically, and he's still trying to fight it and like not be, not use the word vegan, and like you know, like this word vegan has become, like people are beginning to hate the word, you know. And I'm trying to tell him, look, look, just forget about the word, you know, like yeah. you know. And then, yeah. and when once, you, but you know, like you should have so much pride. But then obviously they are not, they're like anti, they're like oh vegan, oh vegan. Well, he doesn't propaganda. want to seem like he's giving in. You know, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. like, I'm thinking, why would he personally, you know, make it a point to message me to tell me and then, like, tell and then on top of that, tell me that I'm still taking dairy and I'm like, wanted to, like, you know, and that's the time that I was sick and I had messaged you and I was sick for yeah. a month. And, um, did you that have was, COVID? I, no, it was a pneumonia. Yeah, yeah, you're better now. Haven't, thank goodness. Yeah, yeah, it was really bad. So luckily, luckily, I haven't had COVID, and but I don't know. I'm kind of wishing I do, and you know, become better so I can have natural immunity because I don't want to get vaccinated. But that's another topic. That oh my god, it's a huge yeah. thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a <laughs> yeah but uh, a lot of yeah, but yeah. So like, um, I think I think, and then you know, I love that uh, when this meme that we have floating around uh tofu never caused a pandemic you know at this yeah. moment we should you know um capitalize on that on what's happening with the pandemic and yeah. remind people that this is happening because we have been abusing other earthlings our cousins to this extent that you know we are causing this to happen no, all yeah, of the, I've got, yeah, I've gotten really frustrated with some conspiracy theorists, vegans that, that like are saying this came from a lab in China, stuff like that, because I'm like, you are not using the opportunity we have here to show that this came from us exploiting animals and therefore yeah. it needs to stop. Because you're saying it was planned, it's by the government, it was from a lab, which is mm. totally ignoring the fact that we could use this as a way to show people this is what happens if you exploit animals yeah you know and, bird um, flu swine flu mad cow yeah. disease sars mers yeah. all of the same family of uh, covid 19 and it comes from you know cramping these animals in making them live in such horrific disgusting conditions and being in you know, close proximity with animals that carry the coronavirus and it, it's fine for them to carry it doesn't make them sick 
it makes us sick because we come in close proximity with them mm. and we spread it or, or it spreads to other species and then we touch those species. Yeah. Yeah. And instead of using that to our advantage, some of these people are just like, you know, trying to say, no, it's, it wasn't caused by that. It was caused. You, you're not helping the animals by saying that. You're not helping their cause by saying that this was caused in, or this was started in a lab. I just it gets very, I get very frustrated. And now I'm probably going to have some people having a big argument <laughs> under <laughs> this video. <laughs> but, you know, so be it. So be it. I made a video also about uh, vaccines and um, fetal. Oh, coronavirus. please send us the link. Yeah. Uh, well, it's on my channel. Uh, it's called uh, Your Vegan Supplement. Uh, it was the thing I was going to do every once in a while. I've only done two or three. I can't remember now because I've been so into this series. Uh, where I just wanted to talk about gray areas or, or different issues that come up in the vegan movement, such as, you know, fetal bovine serum and using animals in, uh, in vaccines and, and, you know, COVID, of course, comes up and all that stuff. But yeah, you can find it on my channel. So, but, um, let's move on. Um, I want to say, I wanted to ask you, would you say it's easy or hard to be vegan where you live? And I, I'm saying as far as, like, if I came there you know, out of nowhere, and I'm a vegan, would I find it hard or easy? Not at all. Not at we all. Are a cultural, we're an agricultural nation. You know, we rely so much on plants. Our market, supermarket, is just... Oh, you'll go crazy. You will go crazy when you go in. It's, we still get amazed when we enter... Well, I can't enter the market now because now they've made it compulsory for you to be vaxxed to enter the market. So someone has to go for me. And uh, yeah, you'll just be amazed to see like it's just full of fresh fruits and vegetables, you know. And then we have our lentils and everything, and it's not hard at all, not at so, all. So that, that I was going to ask Sala. So you used to be the type of person that said that you were allergic to vegetables or something like that. Now, <laughs> did you? So when you became vegan, you realized you were just eating the same few vegetables over and over again, and and realized all the vegetables you hadn't tried that that's the thing yeah, about becoming still, vegan is you, you you people think it's a limited diet i eat things now that i would have never tried in my life if i had remained a meat and dairy eater i i have tried so many exotic foods fruits nuts uh, things i would have definitely never tried if i was still eating burgers and fries literally that's pretty much people talk about limited diets that's what the sad diet yeah. is. It's basically just meat, potatoes, meat, yeah. potatoes. That is the most boring. I look back on it now. It's so freaking boring. It really was. Meat, potatoes, cheese. That's all it was. And these people think that we're limited. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it's crazy. But now, have you have you noticed now you were you, all these foods that you had around you you didn't you hadn't discovered until you went vegan. And now you're appreciating yeah. them. Well, yeah, I'm still Sadi discovering. Sadi lives with his mom, who is an amazing cook. So he gets like a five star, five course meal every <laughs> single day. I live by myself. I, okay, I cook so, as well. Okay, not as much as she does, but I I cook as well, but not as much as she does. But yes, you're right. You're right. That's all it is. <laughs> yeah. I, I, Oh, oh my god, we made pizza. What happened? We made pizza and the other last week we made pizza and we, we've been having a lot of pasta. Uh, we've been making, mom makes her own yogurt and cheese. And it's just like, and I'm like, like, I'm just gonna eat bread today because I'm tired of eating all this amazing, you know, like, <laughs> drank just. <laughs> <laughs> house, buddy. I, mean, I can be I'm pretty sorry. lazy myself. I've I've gone back to raw foods recently, just for my health, you know. And uh, you know, you gotta you gotta get pretty creative with it sometimes. But I just I'm enjoying you know fresh fruits and vegetables, you know, trying new vegetables that I haven't been a long yeah. time, you know, tried before, or or having some that I haven't had in a long time, because yeah. even. Even on a vegan diet, we know that you can get back to the burgers and fries there now too. Yeah, on burgers availability and 
Yeah. I was doing that. I was doing that. <laughs> I want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I but you like know, you're right. Me, like, like your mom would cook me different dishes, but I got lazy and I started going back to uh, like just the burgers and fries. And um, yeah. But so I think I'm like, as you're saying, you're focusing on your health. I think that, I think that comes with it. Uh, because being vegan and then, you know, like starting to respect, you know, your body. And you know when you respect someone well, else's that body, that, that you're not going to exploit. 52. <laughs> I think it was more of my 52nd birthday and being the heaviest I'd ever been in my life. So, I well, you look 30 something. So, you know, <laughs> so that's the plus of being vegan again for human supremacist views. Uh, you know, you want to look young, <laughs> go vegan. <laughs> look at Stacy; she's like 30. <laughs> Good lighting, darling. Good lighting. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. So, yeah. um, all right. So you're saying it's easy to be vegan where you live, but what are the struggles of being vegan where you live? It's just uh, carcasses everywhere. And, uh, you know, like, you know how that, that funny meme of finding milk powder in broccoli and all of that, you know, like, I don't know, like how, why are you putting, if you have plain potato chips, okay, I, I know we're talking about junk food now, plain potato chips, and then you have your vinegar and salt and vinegar one, why are you adding milk powder in it? If I in know, this one I you asked, did not. I said that to somebody one day, I was like, there's there's milk and potato chips, why Every, is potato? Everything, <laughs> it's crazy, and that just shows that that's how exploited these mothers are. Yeah, continuously sexually. That's conspiracy right there. Slipping milk yeah. into everything. Yeah, and uh, it's especially bad. since sixty-five percent of the world's population is, is a, a lactose, lactose intolerant. intolerant. They're just keeping people sick. Yeah, yeah. And what was it? I was going to say. So I was saying, what are the struggles? You said it's like that they're uh, they're slipping that in everything. Is there any other mm. struggles? I think the struggles of being vegan here in Fiji is the struggles of being vegan anywhere. It's the onslaught of advertisements on animals, you know, just showing dead animals like, and then it's, you're walking around and you have the smell as well. And it smells good. You remember what it smells like. You remember what it tastes like. And then you have the people around you who are like, oh, you can't eat fish or you, or you can't eat milk. Why don't you just have this for like today, you know? They, they don't understand the concept. And then it's also like just how normalized it is. Sorry, hold on. My friends are being crazy outside. I told them I had a Zoom meeting just how normalized it has become that I, I'm, I I spoke about this with my partner and it took a while for we both to admit it and for we both to talk about this but when your mind goes back to oh I need eggs you know I wish I could eat eggs or you open the fridge at your someone's house and you see food there and your immediate reaction is you know I'm craving it I want to eat it and then you feel guilty like why do you want to eat this? These are dead animals you think. It's just how normalized it has been, you know, that yeah. if you're not it's conscious, a bad habit. Your mind, yeah. Yes. It, it'll get easier. It'll get easier as time goes on. Yeah, the, a lot of people tell me it's the social pressures or just people. It's mainly other people that makes it hard. <laughs> It's not hard to be vegan itself. It's other people that makes it hard on you. But yeah, that is pretty much the same the world over. Yeah, and the bombardment of advertisements. You know, it's you don't you didn't notice it when you weren't vegan. When you become yes. vegan, it's you notice it's it's everywhere. every other commercial. It's just everywhere. And it's like a horror movie. That's that's the it is. that's yeah. the bit about it, right? You're walking around and there's just dead beings all around you yeah you see the world in a totally different way after yeah. you become vegan it's people that it, you know, things that you might walk past no big deal you see a dead body and you see other people walking past like it's no big deal it's like 
And, yeah. and you're like, what the, how could they think this is not? Yeah. You know? But that's how we used to be. Yeah. So um, we've talked about veganism and uh, kind of how people view veganism there. What do they, how do they view animal rights where you live? Not just veganism, but animal rights. I think there is a disconnect everywhere, but here in Fiji on the difference between farmed animals and pets. When it comes to pets, the animal rights is on fire, you know, take them to jail, burn them, do do the things to them. That yeah. They made this beautiful animal suffer and all. And so the disconnect between that is crazy. So I, I think Fiji in Fiji or carnists in general, they're all for animal rights when it comes to pets. And when it comes to farmed animals, then it's animal welfare, you know, humane slaughter, yeah. farmed, yeah. Livestock and animals, like, you know, they've, they've put them in this box of livestock. Like we yeah. have <laughs> having dominion yeah. over them. Yeah, and they're just, they're supposed to be food. And uh, you, you know, like- Do you guys have slaughterhouses there? Oh yes. Do you? We yeah the the okay so uh, this is what I wanted to mention. So um, eighty percent of deaths it was reported by Fiji Broadcasting Corporation News last year I think uh, that eighty percent of deaths is caused by heart disease oh, in yeah. Fiji. Yeah. So so I think everywhere the world over basically. Is lately yeah. Gone. And so in in the South Pacific and or in generally in the Pacific region. So um, animal flesh eating wasn't there in the past, but it's become so rampant in Samoa. When you pass barbecue, roadside barbecue stalls, they are barbecuing the fats of the animals. So these fats, like all this, the prime cuts are set from like New Zealand, for example, would send it to like other, you know, countries, um, wealthier countries, all the scraps and all the disgusting parts of these corpses get sent to these small islands. And obesity is a huge, huge problem. Like in, like in the United States, obesity is a problem as well. Here as well, when, and you know, like, and people have sort of started glorifying it because, you know, of this body, sh the word body shaming has become this scapegoat for you to not, you know, educate someone about what they're doing to their body. There's, you know, uh, yeah. like how Sal and I, like, but then they have this demarcation between, like, there's this disconnect again, like, they call you skinny, but like, if you call someone fat, it's such a huge deal, <laughs> pardon the pun, you know, but, um, but then uh, the, the excuse that a lot of Pacific Islanders have heard using and glorifying is, oh, we Pacific people are big people, you know, we are big hearted, we are naturally big. And, you know, it's not true. They weren't naturally big. Uh, you know, if you look at all these, uh, uh, you know, uh, portraits of Pacific Island people, they were fit and healthy and muscular. And, you know, they were not obese, like, and how we've made being fat or being obese or being large beautiful it's really unhealthy and i feel like it's just made people more unhealthy and accept like oh it's fine you know you can eat whatever you want no one has a right to say anything it's like um you know when we are talking about animal rights i am not going to let you you know go ahead and believe in personal choice when you know you um have a victim on your plate you know and then it's just that thing of like they like sometimes they'll shut up because the, you can feel like they're trying to you know make that connection but they and I guess so because of society and peer pressure and not wanting to some be a hippie weirdo and then they just don't give in to them their compassion that is in them you know because we yeah. all have it we all are born compassionate uh, beings so yeah so that just the thing about the diet and the big, you know, big, big Pacific Islanders are big and, uh, you know, that I think, and, you know, like health in the health department where, you know, like uh, there's so much money going into health um, uh, funding uh, and that can be avoided, you know, like people are, you know, like, and, he, and he, here Fiji uh, for diabetic patients, 
it's like you know amputation is just it's become like for doctors uh oh yeah we'll you'll, you'll just get amputated like and then like there's no like discussion it's just like we'll chop off your limb you have to chop off your limb like it's just so matter of fact yeah you know? and like, people, if, if people really want a cover again if people really want a government conspiracy <laughs> there you go you know yeah. keeping native people down by that is the conspiracy the mindset yeah. of the western diet that exactly is Mediating colonization yeah. for these woke people. Yeah, we are still being colonized through food. Yeah, to be vegan. Yeah, this is colonization. This is privilege, and this yeah. is killing people. And, and you yeah, know exactly. what? They're actually just handing it to them to let them kill themselves. That's a yeah. big conspiracy of all. Yeah. And now they're and, making excuses for it, and, and and you know, and 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 making yeah. you know labels for it, like oh, we're just big people. You know, it, yeah. you're, you're killing yourself. You don't realize they handed you the tools or they handed you the rope to hang yourself. You know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, it's it. really sad. Like, we, we, Salah and I, like, we are so privileged because, you know, if you look at, uh, you know, two thirds of our population live in poverty, you know, they cannot afford to buy vegetables. They cannot afford it. It's expensive. Yeah, it's so they will buy instant too. noodles. They will buy bread. Um, you know, like it's so sad at this point in time that, you know, people are forced to feeding their kids sugar and water. A uh, lady that used to come and help, you know, ha help us around the house. It was around Christmas. If we, and I asked her, I was like, a mom asked her, so what are you doing? What are you having? What did you have for Christmas? And she's like, oh, she was crying. And she said, you know, we just had rice and tea. They had rice and tea, you know. And like where we have this so much land, you know, where we can grow so much food. And to see this, it's we are already in a dystopian state living in it, you know, where, where people can grow their own food and they're reduced to, you know, all these sicknesses and diseases uh, and CDs because of what, they're eating and yep. that comes and then you know, from and then poor people they get sick and then they're stuck in the system of like you know owing medical bills and it keeps them poor it keeps them poor yeah you know it's a it's a constant when, yeah. cycle yeah and uh yeah they don't realize that they've just been handed the tools to kill themselves and yeah. the government doesn't have to the government does not have to make up COVID 19 in a lab it just doesn't because yeah. we are perfectly capable of killing ourselves. Yeah, and heart they disease is still back. the number one killer. It's the number yeah, one they, killer they still. They just got to stand back and watch us do it. They just got to hand us the tools and let us do it. And we're On, doing it. Yeah, and, but I do, feel, I do feel that there is a shift uh, to more plant-based eating. Um, and like veganism, I don't know about how like... I think that's the only thing that people they're like and then i've heard people say that oh yeah i will do it for my health you know like they're still not making that connection but i do see here i do see like one of our friends uh he's a doctor and you know so the seventh day adventist is it is, is yeah. that what they're called so, yeah so they yeah. they are they are plant-based as well so they they are seventh day adventists here as well and so yeah, so you have like you know like for milk like soy milk like it is expensive, you know. But like for us, we can afford it, and it's just I think like more like people are becoming a bit more health conscious. But then hope that this whole idea of just eat whatever you know, don't you know, let people sh body shame you, you know, all of that keeps creeping in. I think. But yeah, like I think we have we still have a long way to go. We are still a minority as vegans in the world. And, you know, it's just these big corporations and big countries. Once they, you know, start making these changes, then it trickles down to our developing nations and it becomes easier for us, you know. So we just keep hoping that, okay, let's hope bigger changes happen. Like, you know, like at this moment, like um, uh, what's that company? Can Canada Goose mm -hmm. and like yeah. all the, and, and you know, Amaze, uh, they've just discovered this, the crocodile, intensive farming in australia that they provide the skins of these beautiful beasts to this fashion 
line and like i see this all over the globe that people people are you know going for free and you know this animal cruelty is becoming you know people i'm seeing more of it even though they are you know like so i i'm hopeful that that within the next 10 years we can see some bigger bigger like i mean it is the fastest growing social movement well, I mean, in history I, i'll tell you since i became vegan you know which was 15 years ago i've seen leaps and bounds you know uh, especially with social media. So, yeah, it, it's changing. It is changing. It's good. When I first went vegan, um, the only cheese we really had was Daya. It was nasty. <laughs> you know? <laughs> now, so many options. We didn't have Beyond mm. Burgers. You know, I went, you know, I used to eat just veggie burgers. And I really care. I didn't really care for bean burgers and veggie burgers. You know? Yeah. I'm tired of them. yeah. Now, we got Beyond Burgers, and, and I was telling somebody, I it's kind of a curse because you know that's what got yeah. me overweight because I started going back to this. <laughs> Fast uh, food, but yeah. I went for years without them. You know, I mean, it's a blessing and a curse because yeah, I, I mean, health wise, you know, but it, mm. you got to make that decision for your health. You really mm. do. Uh, but but um, yeah, it's a blessing and a curse both. Mm. But it it's possible to be to be vegan without. All these alternatives. Oh, well, yeah, you know, true. People did it way yeah. before me, you know. Yeah. But I've seen leaps and bounds, and it's just gonna, it's just, it just uh, snowballs. It gets bigger and bigger, you know, as it keeps going. So, hmm. so, um, Can I, yeah. go ahead. It's just like, uh, uh, yeah, uh, um, that, you know, like, even I, when, uh, Tasala and I were talking. Was was it yesterday? When we were, I think yesterday or the other day we were talking about how how she said that you know like she used to say she was allergic to vegetables. I too had this you know look. We looked down on vegetables, and you know I don't know how this has happened. Like if now talking to friends, and then once I took this you know uh, uh, oyster mushroom stir fry I took for a friend. He had never eaten, and he ate it, and he was like. He's a carnist, and he's like, "What is this?" I was like, "Just eat it," and he's and I was like, "Is it?" And he's like, "It's so good," but then he would still he he's still eating like you know like, uh, and then some days if he posted something to do with vegetables, like all these friends would comment like, "Oh my God, are you a vegetarian?" Like it's something like it's a bad thing, you know, yeah. when it's what we again should it, has be it has to yeah. do with status. It has to do with status. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. It's, it's been ingrained in us. It's yeah. a status symbol to not have to eat. Isn't it yeah. funny how when we're little kids we're told to eat our vegetables, we get older, and then it's it's like <laughs> our parents are like, Why are you vegan? Wait a minute, didn't you tell me to eat my vegetables? <laughs> and happened? the protein debacle. Oh my yeah. lord. The protein thing is the is crazy. I don't even want to think about it. So my but, next yeah, question he, was gonna be. It was going to be what's your favorite form of activism, um, but you've really only been involved in one form. But what's your favorite form uh, that maybe that you haven't tried that you want to try? Favorite form of activism? Well, what is a form of activism that you, you might, because you've only been involved with AV and online. So it's kind of hard to ask you the question, what's your favorite form? Because <laughs> it's going to be one of those. If I, if I were not if you living, were able in, right now. yeah. If I were not living in Fiji, I would definitely be part of, uh, um, you know, direct uh, action, or you know, animal rebellion. I would definitely be going into places and getting them out of there and making a scene, you know, because people need people are just so like, like you know, like uh, I don't know if you know Leia. She uh, she's on Instagram, Leia Dole, Doling. I think she's Australian. And she has been charged like 26, more than 26 times. And like, you know, they they demonize her in, uh, like when they print news about her. And then when she posts about the same issue. About vegan she booty? Give... Sorry? I didn't hear the name that you said. Are you talking about vegan booty? No, I think well, she's one of them. She's one of them. And then I'm talking about Leah Joel. I forgot her name. I can send it. I can yeah. send you her thing on Instagram if you just... I've forgotten yours, Stacy. What's your Instagram handle? Uh, we, you you can message carpet. it to me later. Ah, oh, right, right. It's written there. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Um. Yeah. So like when she posts about it, 
and she'll be like, oh, I was charged for this. And, and she puts up the photo and it's a dead bird, you know, and another bird is laying next to her and she has rescued the bird, but she has stolen property. You know, that is a narrative that gets printed and that gets believed that these activists are crazy. And, uh, you know, they, this is just, they're doing it for attention. And uh, it's just so sad, but I wish that, but here we can't do stuff like that here, you know? And I'm just, I keep dreaming about, you know, at least getting towards there, like at least protests, we would be laughed at right off the bat. But with AV Cube of Truth, it, because you, they don't know what's going on, you pull them in because they're curious, what is this? You know, so it, it's a really great way of activism, but I would like to do, I would, I would really love to, you know, be all clad up and go uh, in the middle of the night and get as many of them out as possible and take them to a sanctuary. We don't even have sanctuaries. We pl we plan, Salah and I and our other friends, we, we, have, we have a plan in mind of starting a sanctuary, but it's just going to take so many years to do that. The sanctuary and, uh, is a big, big deal. It's going to... Yeah, it's you, so, it's going to be so difficult. That, that is your whole life. Exactly. So yeah, it can't like just start off, but we, it the idea is there in mind to, to have one, and uh, yeah. That's a good, so yeah, that's a good goal. That's a good goal. So Sala, what about you? What would you like to be involved in if you could? I I really I really like street activism. Um, I'm not. Um, I don't like social media, and I don't like the hyping it out, you know, when you're not face-to-face -face with people. I think yeah. being face-to-face -face changes a lot of things. A lot more information can be given. A lot more of a respect is um, going back and forth. And yeah, I really love street activism. And I think we tend to, this is one of my like pet peeves, when somebody tells me, oh, you're like starting a cult. Veganism is another religion because veganism is all sex and all respect to religion. Like it's the, the definition of religion does not include veganism. Veganism is evidence based, it's factual, scientifically yeah. proven, and we have religion is based on faith and something we yeah. on a belief. Facts. Like it's interesting, Salah, when you say with all due respect to religion that's a nice line because uh it leaves you a scapegoat of not giving a crap about religion and you know i hate religion and uh, it is just so like in this day and age like okay first of all that's my like that like if okay fine you want to be delusional and think of somebody up there who is controlling stuff that's on you but you don't if you use that to tell me that it's okay to kill someone, you know, no. Yes. No. And then, and it's always like what, whatever argument, sorry, Salah, whatever, like if they, you know, you're throwing facts, you're throwing facts, this, this, shouldn't even have to be doing that in the first place, but we do it. And then the last one is, but God said, you know, that's when I start yeah. swearing. Yeah, they use it online. as a lot, yeah. Yes, that's when yeah. religion loses all credibility. If religion is the foundation of morality, first of all, why can't you understand for yourself what is right or wrong? Everybody has that innate moral compass. Yeah. Second of all, how are you able to say that the God you're worshipping, heaven and hell, good and bad, moral and immoral, he would condone killing, you know? And if God condones like this, what does the devil do? <laughs> yeah, exactly. what does the devil do? And, and the thing in Fiji is we very... Salah, you can, because you've done a lot of research about, you know, like the Bible and like Fiji is, most of the population in Fiji is, they follow Christianity and like, you know, any official functions, there will be a prayer or ceremony or whatever. So yeah, sorry for cutting you off. I just wanted to add that for Stacy to, you know, yeah. know that, you know, it's mostly a Christian. Yes, it's mostly, it's, it's at that point where religion is given the respect that it is due. But sorry, I, I um, went to my family's house last week 
and there were crabs, six of them tied up together, mm. still alive. Uh, and you know, like when I enter a space, I I um, take note of how many living beings are there. You know, like here it's me, my partner, and uh, our cat Ganga. Ganga. Always in my mind that there's three of us, unless I see an ant or cockroach or spider, and then spider. the numbers. Go. So I yeah. went to my first house. There was five of us, and there were the six crabs, and um, they butchered, they slaughtered those crabs there, just with a butcher knife, cutting it in half. They were going to boil the crabs alive at first, and then they said something went wrong, so they had to kill the crabs. And it went from uh, 11 lives in that room, and six of them just got murdered. And the other four, it's nothing. It's nowhere in the perspective, in the peripheral vision. And I was just traumatized because I, I, don't, I don't surround myself much, or I don't go to places that are carnies. And it was just so traumatizing. Oh, yeah. yeah. What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. You're talking about activism. Why don't we move Absolutely. on to a lighter question? Because we've been on here for a while. It's been about an hour and a half that we've been on here. And uh, it's getting later for me. Uh, you guys are a day ahead of me. so. But let's go ahead and uh, let's, let's lighten it up a little bit. I want to ask you, if a vegan visits where you live, where should they go? That doesn't have to be a restaurant. Where do you think they should go? It could be a restaurant. It doesn't have to. Okay, Propolis, they are the only fully plant-based plant restaurant in Suva. Unfortunately, okay. they, they have just started, so their food can be improved upon. Um, this veggie restaurant, it's about 80% plant-based. The only um, animal product is the cheese on their pizza. We still don't have cheese in Fiji, so okay. the pizzas we get are without cheese. Um, there is, of course, the um, Hindu uh, restaurant, the vegetarian one, and there is this lovely one, Veggie Way. Um, Veggie Way has, has the um, soy substitute, soy meat substitute. So no okay. other restaurant in Fiji has the meat substitute, sorry, the plant-based meat, and they're the only ones who have it. So that's my, those are my topics. Okay. And apart from the um, restaurants that you can find uh, completely plant-based or, you know, like uh, like Sala mentioned, the Indian restaurants um, and the uh, um, the few, uh, the one that's 80% uh, the veggie restaurant and Propolis Cafe that's fully plant-based. Um, I think it's going, uh, discovering the rainforests in Fiji and just getting into the nature and uh, you know like yeah we're famous for beaches and like you know ocean and sea but like going into the rainforest like going inland and you know river rafting and just getting in touch like for vegan to go in and surround themselves in you know like far away from people and just it's just so good you know, like go to waterfalls and this, there's a lot of those here. So if you want to yeah, come and, you know, yeah. So, you know, like Stacy, you know, if you want to come, you can stay at my house, like for free, obviously. And, you know, we're, and we will take you around. We're everywhere. Yeah. That's really and then, the reason I do. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come. Soon. Make some connections and have a place to stay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, you know, like, we just want, like, it's so amazing connecting with vegans all over the world through Facebook. You know, I never I never used to use Facebook. I started using Facebook because to do to do activism. And then just, you know, Sala and I and our other friend Chris, and then we just suddenly started getting these friend suggestions. And we were just like, you know, <laughs> add, 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 because I everyone around. What you got to do most days is try to avoid the news feed, unfortunately. <laughs> that is, depending yeah. on the mood you're in, that, or what kind of day you're yeah. having. Sometimes uh, yeah. Yeah. Too much for me these days. Yeah. And just, just lately, I've been getting a, you know, like I can see in the people who did not want to interact 
with my posts at all. I'm seeing likes, you know, I'm seeing hard reacts and I'm like, oh my God, Isaac just hard reacted my comment about, you know, animal rights. So, okay, so like people are watching and people are, you know, like, you know, we can, even if they don't interact, we, we can't assume that they don't see it and don't watch the video. They, they probably are and they just try, you know, like trying to escape that conditioning and not having to own up to, you know, the fact that they were, have been doing, you know, like, you're right. They, people can't do that because, you know, of ego and... Um, uh, that's a big problem too, I think. So, but like getting that, like slowly, I've been seeing some interaction from friends. Of it took a year for them to start interacting. <laughs> so I was like, how long will it take them to actually go vegan? I don't know, but I'm hopeful. Yeah, sometimes it's the quiet ones that are watching. So. Yeah. But um, what? All right. What's your favorite local vegan dish that they should try if somebody comes to visit? What's your favorite local vegan dish? Sala? Oh, palasami. Uh, palasami. It's palasami. Yeah. Palasami. It's part of loho. Um, loho is the traditional way of cooking food. And it usually. In the banana leaves? Yes. yes. That one. Uh, in the ground, so, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So there's a, um, a family that does loho here in Suba. They do it with the pig and chicken and all. But I order just the so they okay sorry they follow sami with dawo and then they bundi vakalolo it's bundi plant planting is that what it's planting, called like banana yeah. like a banana yeah yes. plantain yes in like in this vakalolo or vakasoso the one there's the two milk? yeah there's vakalolo. two okay like, vakasoso is like the vakasoso. one. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So there's two, two. Yeah. You're making me hungry. It sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> and it's you know it's hungry. amazing. I'll take either food. one, the Lolo or the So-So. I don't care. <laughs> sounds great. So Saudi, what yeah. about you? What what's your favorite vegan dish? Ooh. I just love food and um uh Anything so what you can find makes, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, but sometimes like it's it's like you know like mine is better, <laughs> but uh, like my aunt would tell my mom like oh yeah I knew you didn't cook it because it wasn't nice and my mom's like I'm never gonna like after she stops uh, puts the phone down she's like I'm never gonna cook this ever again <laughs> you can cook it <laughs> um, I like uh, so palusami so uh, same. Uh, ingredient which is uh, taro leaves we call it roro so same ingredient you can just toss it in with onions and garlic and a little bit of salt and you can add coconut milk in like traditional uh, south indian uh, i'm from a uh, uh, south indian descendant so we have a lot of south indian cuisine as well coconut is a huge part of our uh, traditional south indian diet and Pacific uh, Islander diet. So, you know, you throw in juice out the coconut milk and you cook with that. And so this taro leaves with the coconut milk and onions is just so amazing. And then you eat it with like this really um, uh, boiled uh, cassava. Cassava is like another root crop. Um, yeah. And yeah, and so you boil it till it's like, like, uh, <sighs> Ah, oh, I'm hungry. <laughs> so it's like, uh, you know, it, it breaks apart. And then you just use that to dip into the the taro leaf, roro. It's called roro. And you just dip it and it's amazing. And it's nutritious. Oh, my God. It's That's like dark great. green leafy vegetable. Yeah. That sounds amazing. So uh, also, I want you to tell us how they can get involved with the local vegan community. If somebody comes to visit, how can they, they get involved? Um, through us <laughs> and AV, AV, AV Fiji, AV Fiji, okay. yeah. And now, uh, would that be uh, AV Fiji or AV Suba, or it's actually thing? AV? It's it's actually listed as AV Nandi, right? Salah, isn't it listed Nadi? as AV? Okay. Yeah, it's listed AV as Nadi. that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. 
All right. So finally, where would you like to visit one day and learn about veganism there? Have you guys traveled at all? Um, I've never left the country. Really? So okay. no. Yes. Yeah. But I've, Israel, yeah. the capital, the vegan capital of the world, Gary Yarovsky, like hopefully he's there as well when I go He visit. actually lives in Michigan, with the, which is just above me. But uh -huh. <laughs> he doesn't live yeah. in Israel. <laughs> So yeah. he's American. Yeah. Like you want to go to Israel? I've had other people say that. Yeah. So, Sadi, what about you? Um, I'm I'm thinking uh, the UK. Um, okay. Because uh, I think is isn't it like the like veganism is like skyrocketing there right now yeah. as well. Yeah. I have a so lot of the... uh, YouTube friends that are from the UK. So. Hmm. Yeah, and like. You know, like vegan there. they just had the, the vegan camp out. It was huge. Like oh my god, yes! People. I keep seeing and like, that, and I'm like, yeah. you know, like all all the friends are posting about it. All the yeah. Facebook vegan friends are posting about it. I'm like, ah, <laughs> I want yeah, to go like, to this place. They asked where, you know, me if I was going, and I was like, I can't. I just can't go. Yeah. I just can't be there. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, it's it's it would be amazing to go to a place. And be surrounded by people who know yeah. you, who you don't have to explain. Like, and you know, you go yeah. and you want to buy some food. Like, you can say, "Oh, can I have a cheeseburger?" You can. Yeah. You don't have to say. You don't have to not ask do the ingredients. Yeah, you don't have to. You, you just say, "Oh, I'm gonna have some beef." You know, and you don't even have for them to be confused. Worry about them yeah. being confused about. Wait, aren't you a vegan? Like. Like, come on, man. It's 2021. Yeah, they also had the Animal Rights March, too, just last week, I think it was. And that's that's what really, like, when I think, look, look at these things, that's when I get really like, oh, man, I wish I could, you know, like, you know, go to a McDonald's sit-in with these people and, yeah. you know, and use a megaphone and just use my voice and say, what the hell are you doing? Wake up. You know, you guys definitely so sound passionate about doing activism, but just just find what you can do right now. I mean, it sounds like you already are, so just continue yeah. doing that. Yeah, uh, I wish you luck with all that. I actually do have one more surprise question before we get out of here. All right, you just mentioned that you made pizza, so what would you say about pineapple on pizza? Yes or no? Uh, yes. yes. <laughs> I don't get it. I don't Tea get pineapple. why people. I don't get why it gives, gives, gives that ten tangy, and then you know you get your Tea. other flavors mixed. In. I think it's something that there must be, there must be something wrong with their taste buds. I think there's something wrong with them. They're yeah. I'm, I'm one of those people who can't eat cilantro because it tastes like soap to me. People give me a hard time. Well, I think people who don't like pineapple on pizza are weird. <laughs> Mine's They're dead. weird. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Team Pineapple, yay! All right, guys. With that, it is getting late for me, so I'm gonna have to let yep. you go. But you know what? I had such a great time meeting you, and uh, thank really you for this. It's amazing. Thank you know, so we were much. so excited for today, and so that much. you know, we we yeah. were like on the I, dot, like we have to be there at one, I'm opening the computer. <laughs> Um, yeah, thank you so much. To talk to you guys. It really was. I mean, if if I didn't have to be up early for, for work in the morning, I'd stay on. We can do more of these, you know. We can sure. whenever, you know, like we can. Maybe we can, I'll do definitely. a check in with you guys sometime. And uh, yeah. Fun. All right. Well, I wish you sure. a wonderful day. The rest of your day is ahead of you. And I have a good go night, Stacy. Sleep well. <laughs> dream beautiful vegan dreams. All and right. hopefully. Yeah, we'll keep in touch. All right, guys. Thank you so much, Sala, Sadi. I'll let you go. I'm going to remove you here. And you have a good night. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. Guys, I had so much fun. I'll talk to you later, Sadi. Um, <laughs> I, would, I would stay on here if I had more time, but I really do have to go to bed, so you know the routine. Listen, guys. I'm going to try to up my, my game here. Um, this has taken a while. There, I have uh, interviewed almost 30 people. Uh, it's been going on for about six months. And uh, I still have a lot of countries to go. And that is my goal. 
So to keep on track, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna up my game if possible. If it, it's not easy to get some of these interviews, it takes a lot of coordinating, a lot of back and forth, um, and some crazy people. To be honest with you, <laughs> you do meet some crazies, but um, but so far we've been lucky. We've had great great uh, guests. But anyway, I'm gonna try to do this twice a week. So um, you may be seeing this on a Tuesday. You may be seeing it on Wednesday. It depends on if I get my next interview done before this weekend so I can get that out next week, which is when you'll see it. So anyway, guys, thank you. Thank you again for being here. Thank you for all your support. Please like, share, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. Help my channel grow. I'm working hard on this. Let people know about this. Maybe they'll be interested. If they're traveling, say, hey, why don't you check out the video on this country? Uh, Anyway, thanks, guys. I'll see you soon. Bye. Love you.